Hi dear Leos, welcome to my YouTube channel and in this video I'm going to talk about the transits for the month of March. This year March is going to be paradoxical. On the one hand we don't have a lot going on but at the same time we have a lunar eclipse at the end of March. So yeah, even though not a lot is going on but still it's going to feel intense energetically. And not necessarily in a bad way, it's just like eclipse, uh, the months around the eclipses are always like energetically like intense you, there's this feeling of like oh i have to be doing something like something is about to change that kind of feeling and so uh let's begin on like the first week of march is gonna be uneventful so to speak because we have the last quarter moon on march 3rd okay and that usually the last quarter moon uh, is a time when not a lot happens it's not a great time to start new things even if you do start new things it's gonna um, it's not gonna take off the ground it's gonna take a lot of effort and it's gonna reap little rewards so why would you want to start something around the time like that it's better to wait until the new moon which is gonna happen on march 10th but i'm but i'll get there and uh, so uh, the period from march 1st until march 6th it is a good time to recharge your batteries. It's like naturally, it's a great time for that. Don't feel guilty if you don't have much energy. Don't feel guilty if you feel lazy. It's naturally the time to feel like that. It's also a good time to start get, getting ready uh, for the upcoming new moon. Uh, you can make an appointment so that you can go to that appointment after the new moon. You can fill out an application so that you can find out the, re the decision regarding that application after the new moon. You can mail something so that it's delivered by the time of the new moon. You get the idea. Mm, but other than that, don't try to start uh, anything new, uh, at least until March 6th. Okay, next. Uh, on March 9th, uh, Mercury is going to enter Aries until May 15th. That's an unusually long time for Mercury to be in a sign. Normally, Mercury uh, spends barely three weeks uh, in a sign, but this time it's going to be in Aries for a little more than two months. And that is because of the upcoming Mercury retrograde in April. But I'm going to talk about the Mercury retrograde in April. But for now, uh, what I need to mention is, on March 18th, Mercury is going to enter the shadow zone. Okay, what I mean by that is like, you know how like Mercury is traveling and then it's like uh, gonna station uh, retrograde, turn backwards and come to this spot where it's gonna turn direct and start going direct and uh, going forward again. So this spot uh, is very important and this spot is on March 18th. Okay, and so uh, if you need to sign a contract and uh, make a, a big decision, in agreement, uh, do so before March 18th, like especially if you need to buy electronics and stuff, uh, buy that uh, in the first half of March because uh, Mercury rules those things like agreements, contracts, uh, electronics and if you buy those, I mean if you sign contracts uh, and agreements uh, when Mercury is not in a good shape, when it's retrograde, when it's in the shadow zone that means the thing, um, the electronics thing that you bought like is not gonna uh, last as long as it's supposed to or it's gonna malfunction uh, yeah so you might have to return it etc so it's a good idea uh, to keep the receipt or make sure it has a warranty or make sure you get an insurance for it if you buy it after March 18th but if you buy it like before March 18th if you sign the contract before March 18th you're gonna be fine you don't need to worry about anything yeah in fact I would actually encourage you to sign contracts uh, because all of the planets are direct uh, in the first half of March. Okay, so do take advantage of that opportunity. And so this Mercury, Mercury in Aries, is in your ninth house. Ninth house is a house of personal philosophy. It's like the filter through which you interpret the world. It's like your worldview. Ninth house is a very global house. It's also a very spiritual house. Not like... Um, spiritual in a like a esoteric way but more like organized religion kind of spirituality okay like a written philosophy kind of stuff um it's the 12th house where we like get into delusional spirituality thing <laughs> but ninth house is where where we are still kind of like sane um so mercury in, when it's traveling through your ninth house it might be the time when you communicate with foreigners um, 
yeah, because the Knights has also rules foreigners. It might be the time with, uh, yeah, for, wait, no, not yet, no, um, never mind. So, uh, the communication, uh, maybe watching foreign movies, communicating with foreigners, as I said, maybe like feeling thirst for knowledge, because uh, Ninth House is a house of like higher education. This is a house of knowledge also. So, when you have Mercury transiting uh, that house, you might feel like reading stuff. You, you might be like more willing to read around that time. Uh, research, learn something new, like attend, sign up for a webinar or something. And yes, yeah, so next on March 10th, we have a new moon in Pisces on the 20th degree of Pisces. Um, so you will, you can start expecting news, announcements, decisions starting from March 6th because now we start feeling the effects of the new moon four days before the new moon itself. Uh, and for you, dear Leos, this new moon is going to happen in your 8th house. So 8th house is a house of um, your partner's finances. It's a house of other people's money in a sense that like uh, it's a house of inheritance. It's a house of uh, banks, loans, okay, um, mortgage, stuff like that, insurance. Yeah. And so uh, those themes will be prominent for you in March. Uh, why? Because uh, this new moon is going to be loosely sandwiched between Saturn and Neptune, okay? And Saturn is in the early degrees of Pisces and Neptune is in the late degrees of Pisces and the luminaries will meet somewhere in the midpoint of these two big planets. And so that means you're going to have four planets in your eighth house. That's a huge focus for you and especially with this new moon. So uh, March is very much about finances for you. But also, so eighth house is not only about finances, it's also the house of like intimacy. Mm, it's also the, a very psychological house, like deep transformative emotions. It's like um, scary emotions almost, like very intense house. Like uh, the transformation, like, you know, like after a heartbreak, you go through some major break, like psychological breakdown and then you emerge transformed it's like that kind of house but i'm trying not um, but i shouldn't scare you like it's not gonna be like that it's just um you might have to talk more about finances like loans and stuff um those thoughts will be more prominent in your mind some years it might be the time when you go through a transformative experience like uh, some viewers might need medical surgery for example that's very much eighth house uh, for other uh, Leos, it might be the time when they start uh, therapy, when they find a good therapist. Um, yeah, psychological and money stuff. It's like Scorpio house, so Scorpio related things. Okay. And yeah, so one day after this new moon, uh, like the moon is going to leave Pisces, right? But Venus is going to take its place by entering Pisces. So still, we will have four planets in there. And then later on March 22nd, Mars is going to join the party. So you will have five planets in your uh, eighth house, the other people's money house. So it's like a lot of focus is on your partner's finances for those of you who are in a relationship. Um, for other Leos who are not necessarily in a relationship, this might be the time of like loans, as I said. Uh, deep emotions, transformations, okay, and psychology. So next, um, on March 11th, as I said, Venus is going to enter Pisces. Uh, March 19th, uh, the sun is going to enter Aries, spring equinox, yay. Um, even though this year, uh, winter was not very cold in the United States because of some hurricane in South America, which was nice, I loved it, but still, I'm looking forward to spring. Um, next. And finally, at the end of March, on March 25th, we have a lunar eclipse in Libra. Uh, dear Leos, for you, that is your third house. Third house is a house of siblings, neighbors, like peers, like classmates, um, short distance travel, okay? Like traveling around your city, like uh, the local big city, like, yeah, that kind of stuff. Uh, imagine like uh, girls going on a trip to the big city, that, that kind of energy. And so, lunar eclipse. Lunar eclipse is a full moon eclipse, okay? And full moons are about 
um, clarity, culmination, illumination, achievement. Uh, okay, what what else am I forgetting? Yeah. Okay. So anyway, so illumination, clarity, achievement, uh, culmination. Yeah. Regarding your third house matters, communication, uh, siblings, peers, neighbors, short distance travel. Something regarding those matters is going to come to culmination or maybe achievement. Maybe your sibling will achieve something. Uh, something major coming to a culmination in your sibling's life. Um, yeah, maybe like major achievement. Uh, maybe some clarity regarding uh, communication, peers. Maybe you'll find out something about a classmate. Uh, you know, a lot of people, they uh, stay in touch with classmates. I noticed that when I have things going on in my third house, um, I get a text from classmates and stuff. It's uh, where I find out something major about a classmate. Uh, so third house is very much about like classmates, peers, because it's a house of education. Um, high school, elementary school, ninth house is a house of like higher education. Yeah, so anyway, I'm getting distracted. Um, so third house. It also might be the time when some Leos might decide to sell their car and get a new car. Uh, or maybe they find out something about their car that needs to be fixed. So lunar eclipses are huge changes. It's like 20 new moons or 20 full moons packed into one. Um, full, like the eclipses are the times of like milestones. It's like before and after point. Yeah, and, not, and I'm not saying this in a dramatic way. Sometimes it's in a good way. Okay. Mm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, and since the third house is also the house of communication, it also rules phones. Some Leos might uh, get a new phone. <laughs> uh, like uh, the old phone is going to come to a combination. Yeah, mm, many possible interpretations. So what I can advise is try to remember what happened uh, to you regarding your siblings, communication, short distance travel, peers back in 2005 and 2006 because that's when we had uh, this eclipse, okay, this exact eclipse, back in the fall of 2000, uh, no, spring of 2006, okay, try to remember. Uh, so, yeah, dear Leos, this month is very much about, like, uh, finances, like, other people's money, your partner's money, or, like, loans, um, psychology, transformative experiences. And then towards the end of month, it's, uh, the focus is going to be on your siblings, communication. Uh, I feel like I'm repeating myself, but it's very much accurate. Even if you think, oh, this is BS, try to watch this video like in, in April and see if it was true. Okay, um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please subscribe and like, okay? And I hope to see you guys in my April video. Okay, enjoy the eclipsy month of March.